Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. Welcome to the best gaming, tech, emulation, and open source news channel on YouTube. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off talking about PSP emulation with PPSSPP. And PPSSPP just released version 1.16. If you watch this channel regularly, you probably knew this one was coming, but in 1.16, it's official. Retro Achievements is fully supported by PPSSPP. All you have to do is go to the System tab in your Settings menu and you should find it there. At this point in time, there's 202 PSP games with Retro Achievements. And PPSSPP supports Hardcore Mode, or Challenge Mode as they call it, and also Encore Mode. Also in version 1.16 are a whole bunch of bug fixes and performance improvements. And everyone likes performance improvements. For example here, there's performance improvements on lower end devices by disabling Uber shaders. Multiple fixes for glitches like Flickr in WWE vs Smackdown 2006, Shadows in Motorstorm and more. And they say here as well, lots of additional performance improvements and fixes. If you wanted to see the entire change log in full detail, I'll drop a link to it in the description below and feel free to check it out. PPSSPP is 100% free and open source, and I recommend picking up the latest version. Moving on, and we're talking about Wii U emulation on Android with CMU, but possibly not in the way you've been expecting, or maybe exactly the way you've been expecting based on how things have gone recently. Someone is using WinLater to use the PC version of CMU on Android. Surprisingly, someone was able to get Mario Tennis up and running and rendering pretty well. Unsurprisingly, the frame rates are in the single digits, performance is awful, and I'd argue it's completely unplayable. Unless you've got a whole lot of patience. If you are curious about this one, check out the YouTube video. I'll drop a link in the description below. On a quick side note here, there's an update to the story we talked about in the last video about Cyberpunk 2077 running on Android. There is a YouTube video. I'll drop a link to it in the description below, and feel free to check this one out as well. Performance is surprisingly better than I would think it would be, but at the same time, I would argue it's also unplayable. Next up, we're quickly talking about N64 emulation on PC with Simple64. And Simple64 just got a brand new update that adds the ability to specify custom cheat codes. So if you like to cheat in games, you may want to check out this version. And speaking about versions and updates, next up we're talking about Linux kernel 6.6. .6, and today 6.6 .6 got its very first release candidate. So if you like to be on the cutting edge of things, and I mean really sharp cutting edge, you might want to check out this version, as long as you don't mind bugs and glitches and hiccups along the way. Next up, we're talking about Nintendo, and possibly the Switch too, and possibly not. It was spotted on a whole bunch of different websites, but apparently Nintendo filed a patent for Hall Effect like joysticks. And I say that very loosely because you can't patent the Hall Effect joystick, it already exists. I'll drop a link to the patent filing in the description below and feel free to check it out. It mentions magnetorheological fluid whose viscosity changes with a magnetic field intensity. It's a very interesting concept. I'm not a patent expert, but some of this stuff reminds me of Hall Effect joysticks and some of it does not. I'm hoping that Nintendo has finally resolved their joystick drift issue and will implement this in something moving forward. Let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Next up, we're talking about MediaTek and their upcoming Dimensity 9300, and there may be a pretty big problem with performance and temperatures. So Android Headlines is reporting this one. I'll drop a link to the article in the description below. So the biggest problem with the Dimensity 9300 is that it may be running too hot to support even its reported speeds. If the chip gets too hot, performance gets throttled. And if the chip is overheating on base frequencies here, that may be a massive problem. If this article is true, from an emulation standpoint, I'd argue the 9300 could be a total disaster. I mean, heat is a big problem for some Android emulators out there. Heat results in thermal throttling, resulting in lower performance. And if the 9300 is already running hot, some emulators really push that CPU to generate even more heat, resulting in thermal throttling and lower performance. From my understanding, the 9300 is set to be unveiled pretty soon, and only time will tell to see if there actually is a temperature issue. Hopefully there's not. But moving on, and next up, we're talking about the Xbox One, and Artifice has just appeared on GitHub. 
and it seems to be a pretty massive exploit for the Xbox One. So Artifice is described as a custom tool designed to achieve privilege escalation autonomously for Xbox One developer mode. And I'm assuming if Microsoft knows about this one, they're probably going to patch it out pretty quick if they can. Version 1.0.0 has been released and in terms of Xbox hacking, I'm not quite sure what the limits are. Does this mean more performance in dev mode? Does this mean custom drivers? Does this mean running backups of games? I am completely unsure here. But there's a very interesting write-up, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. Next up, we're talking about Nintendo 3DS emulation with Citra, and Citra got a brand new update. So there are arguably three main versions of Citra. The stable build, the nightly build, which is a little bit more experimental, and the canary build, which is arguably even more experimental. And these updates have to do with the canary build. So Canary 2613 here fixes rendering in Tales of the Abyss and Pac-Man Party 3D. And Canary 2614 here fixes crashing on Mali GPUs. And last up here, this is more of just a fun thing, so I'll keep it quick. I saw this video the other day and it really got me thinking. It's called Top 10 Import Staples of All Time. I'll drop a link to it in the description below and I do recommend checking it out. It's only nine minutes long. There were some games on this list that I haven't played in a long time and I might have to revisit them. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.